Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on populating a list box based on a selection made in another list box. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this Excel workbook two worksheets, data and storage. I'm going to start here with the storage worksheet. So I have in column A a list of four disorders. And let's assume that we're working with a mental health agency and they want to correctly categorize disorders and the treatments they typically use for this, those disorders. So we have depression, anxiety, OCD, and substance use. So in this example, I want a user form with two list boxes. And one list box will be populated with the disorders here in column A. Based on the selection I make in terms of what disorder I select here, I will get the treatments that this particular agency tends to use for the selected disorder. And I color coded these to make it a little easier to understand. You have depression here in blue, and these four treatments they would be using potentially one of these four treatments they'd be using for depression, anxiety, and these five treatments, OCD, and these six treatments, and then substance use, and there's five treatments. So if I go back to the data worksheet, I have the participants, and I have participant numbers, and when I select this first cell, I want to be able to open a user form. I have a blue rectangle here, it's already tied to a user form. And here in this disorder list box I see the disorders and I select one the corresponding treatments come up in the treatment list box. So first to show you how I linked this rectangle to that user form. You right click, go down to assign macro. You can see this is associated with a subroutine named open form. So if I go into the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11, and go to Sheet 1, you can see I have a subroutine named OpenForm, and it just has one line of code, mainform.show. And if I go here to the top left and select mainform, I have the user form that I just showed you a moment ago from the worksheet view. So this was fairly straightforward to configure. If I go up here to the menu bar and select Toolbox, this was created by inserting a new user form. I changed the back color. I put on two labels here from the Toolbox, two list boxes, and one text box. There's no code behind any of these controls. I just have the controls on the user form at this point. So before I configure the code behind this user form, I go back to the worksheet. And I used dynamic named ranges for these ranges to make coding more straightforward. So if I go up to formulas and name manager, you can see I have the anxiety named range, depression, disorder, OCD, and substance use. I also have one named all data and participants. But for this example, the other five, the ones I'll be using. And you can see the code, the formula, for these dynamic name ranges is listed here to the right under refers to, as well as down here at the bottom. So I'll be using those dynamic named ranges to configure the list boxes. So moving back to the code view, the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to start by right clicking the user form and selecting view code. And by default it's going to say user form click. I'm just going to delete this and paste in another subroutine. And this one is just to populate list box one with the disorder selections. So list box one dot row source equals disorder and disorder is in quotation marks. So this 
name disorder is the name of the dynamic named range that contains these values in column A. So when I open the user form, list box one will be set with those disorders. Those disorder names will be populated in list box one. So if I stop here and don't add any other code, go back to the worksheet and click on the blue rectangle, you can see the disorders are now in list box one. Moving back to the Visual Basic Editor. Now I'm going to continue and I'm, I'm going to add code for the list box one click event. So I'm just going to double click on list box one and use this subroutine that comes up, list box one click, and populate the subroutine with this code. So I'm going to declare x as an integer and set x to equal listbox1.listindex. And then I'm just going to use select case to determine which row source to use for listbox2. The case is zero, that is the first item in the listbox, will have the depression named range as the row source for listbox2. Then we have one associated with anxiety, two with OCD, and three, or the fourth selection, associated with substance use. Then end select, and that's the end of the subroutine. Next, I want to build out the list box two click event. So I'll go back to the user form and click on list box two. We can see here private sub list box two click. And here I'm going to paste in this code dim str as string. So I'm declaring str as a variable, a string variable. str equals list box two text. Then the word for with a space before it and after it. And then list box one text. So this will list the treatment, then the word for, then the disorder. So for example, cognitive therapy for depression. Then text box one will be set to that variable, to str. So this allows the user to preview the treatment and the disorder, and then they can decide if they want to add it to column B on the worksheet. So this is the list box to click. To add the string, I'm going to use double click. So I'm going to go up here to the top. You see list box two is already active here in this combo box. And the combo box to the right has click. I'm going to go down to double click, right below click. So now we have list box two, double click. And I'm going to paste in this code. So first I'm going to declare str as a string. Then set str to equal text box one value. So text box one is going to function as a preview. The treatment, the word for, and then the disorder are going to appear in text box one. Next we have the active cell being set to equal str. So moving back here to the worksheet, if the active cell is cell B2, we open the user form, select the disorder, the available treatments come up. We select one of the treatments, we double click on that. It's going to appear in this cell, in B2. Then the cell below the active cell is going to be selected, one row below in the same column. Then text box one will be reset to nothing, and list box two, row source, will be set to nothing. So let's see how this works. Back in the worksheet, cell B2 is already selected. I'm going to open the user form. And let's say we have a participant that comes into the agency. And this participant has been diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. So we select that. And the participant talks to the counselor. And they decide together that 
they want to try reality therapy. They think reality therapy would be effective for this particular participant. Select reality therapy, and here we have a preview of what's going to be added to the worksheet, reality therapy for OCD. So I double click on reality therapy, and it comes up in cell B2, and now the active selection is cell B3, so I can continue. So let's say the next participant is diagnosed with depression. That individual meets with their counselor and they decide on psychodynamic therapy. Psychodynamic for depression. Double click. And we can just continue on this way. So we could just keep adding the treatments and disorders for as many participants as we need to. And this will keep resetting list box 2 and text box 1. And we just have to pick out the disorder again and it will populate with the available treatments. I hope you found this video on populating one list box based on the selection of another list box to be helpful. And thanks for watching.